Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to European Truck Simulator 2. And welcome to, we're about halfway down, uh, I don't want to say down toward the coast. We're about halfway on a trip from Balvi, Latvia to, oh, I gotta say it. Is it here? Chernyakovsk, which is in that little pocket of Russia on the Baltic Sea. Let's get to it. We are in our... Mercedes uh, MP4. This is the new Actros. Is it not? Yeah, it is. And we've got... Alright. Things just dropped off a little bit there, but then they picked right back up. Oh, FPS. I'm always, I'm always chasing you. You know I am. Right, we've got about 258 kilometers to go. And that ought to be about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, so this will work out perfect. And this is really exactly where we stopped last episode. Last episode, if I recall... And you know what's crazy is it was like two weeks ago that we were taking this trip, and yet we picked up from exactly where we left off. Save game. Man, it's like a trip through time. It really is. We stopped, uh, let me see. We I thought it was going to be just a couple hundred K. Turned out to be longer than that. And then the last part of the trip, like everything started going crazy on us. Things were not working out well. But they're, but they're going to be fine now. Sir? Sir? Oh, oh dear. Oh, Ikea! Right, carefully. Carefully. Beautiful. Right, so what is going- oh, alright. Oh, oh god. Are we starting off that way? Really? Is that how it's going to be? Let's just get out of town. Let's just get on the road and everything's going to be fine. So, what's going on? It's Sunday for me. Monday for you. And today, let me see. How do I want to say this? Sunday morning, I spent the night at a, uh, at a cabin on a lake. A lake house. Like vacation house. And we barbecued. We, we grilled as you do. And we had some wine and it was wonderful but it's a it's a lake house it's very remote and when I woke up this morning I know the Indy 500 is going to be on today but then I wasn't sure if they were running the Grand Prix of Monaco today as well some years it it happens on the same day I'm being very careful after that ticket I just want to get us out of town some years they fall on the same weekend and I know they used to, and it, they may still, but I know for a time, the Indy 500 and I want to say it was the Coca-Cola 600, the NASCAR race, would both be run on Memorial Day. And there were several times where drivers did both, where they did the Indy 500 at, I want to say the race starts about noon, let's call it a three-hour race, and uh, got on their, their private jet and headed down to Charlotte and did the the long, the Coca-Cola 600 is the longest race on the NASCAR calendar, and that started a late afternoon and went to early evening, and I want to say was that was one of the first night races, or races with lights, yeah, but there were several drivers that, that did both, I know Robbie Gordon was one of them, but it got me thinking, well, first off, the Grand Prix of Monaco is not this weekend, it's next weekend, but the Indy 500 is most definitely today. But it got me, whoa, got me thinking about when I was a kid and um, watching racing with my dad. We would watch the Indy 500 live. And then after the Indy 500, there would be like a tape delay of, of the Grand Prix of Monaco if it was the same weekend. And I was thinking that today, like right now in the modern era, if you want to know who won, right, you just go online and look it up. And I was thinking, when I was a kid, from, because the race goes off at, whatever, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., East Coast, U.S. time. And we wouldn't find out who won the race till 5 or 6 in the afternoon, 5 or 6 in the evening. And it's interesting to reflect back on that and know that back in the day, when I was a kid, there was no way that you could get that information. There really wasn't. And it's so weird even for me now to think, well, shit, man, you just go to a website. Just look it up. 
there were no websites. There was no way to look it up. And maybe you would hear like a radio sports broadcast. You could turn on AM radio and you could hear a sports broadcast and they tell you. But as far as a place to go and look it up, no, there really wasn't. There was just no way to get that information. So times have really changed. And I was also thinking that, is it, uh, it's not Graham Hill. There's one driver in history that has won the Indy 500, the Grand Prix of Monaco, and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Might be Graham Hill. Uh, maybe not. Uh, now I want to look it up. Jim Clark? Oh. But there's one driver that's done it. Ever. 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 And uh, it'll never happen again because Indy and Formula One are both too specialized now. You know, in the 50s and 60s, Indy was like, I mean, it was never quite Formula Libre, but it was like, run what you brung. You know, what do you got? You got an old F1 car? Bring it. Race it. There was a, a turbine. Somebody ran a turbine car, like a helicopter engine, in the Indy 500. It it was a it was a different era for sure. And I think the the spectacle and sort of blood sport aspect of of IndyCar. It was more uh, well, all racing was more chaotic and much more dangerous and unstructured. Maybe is a good word. And it's all it, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that that racing is so much safer now. But IndyCar is essentially spec racing. You know, they're all running what, same car and you have a couple engine choices or is it the is it the opposite? You have a couple chassis makers and you only have one engine, but it's it's spec racing. There's no other word for it. It's everybody's running the same car. So you win on setup and you win on driver skill and pit stops, I guess. And um, and the same in F1. Uh the difference, I guess, in F1 is that you've got the the big three, and then you've got best of the rest. But that's just about spec racing. It's it's how how well a different manufacturer builds the car to spec. But it's still good. I mean, I love I love F1. I love uh, I love any car in kind of a different way. Let me get over here before this car comes up behind us. But it's different than, than it was when I was a kid. It's certainly different. So that is, uh, in the real world, that's what's going on this weekend. I gotta slow down a little bit before I get another ticket. Slow it down, slow it down. So what is going on in sim gaming? Don't slow it down that much. What's going on in sim gaming? Well, I can tell you that 1.35 beta is available for both ATS and ETS. And we have multiple profiles. And we're, we're keeping it all together. We're making it all work. I've seen several massive workshop items upload for both ATS and ETS. I assume those are some of the, the bigger truck and trailer mods that I use. So everything is getting patched up to 1.35. We'll be good to go there. And, uh, you know, it's crazy because I saw that Pro Mods 2.40. And I downloaded that and we got a, a profile going. I wasn't able to bring my profile across. So we got that profile going with ProMods 2.40, which has some things added to it, but because 1.35 will not have a ProMods for it straight away, we can either drive in that 1.34 ProMods 2.40 profile, or we can skip ahead to the 1.35 patch with no ProMods. Basically, we're gonna have just kind of a glimpse of the 2.40 ProMods, and, and that's it. And then we'll either be running without it or we will move forward to the next release of Pro Mods. So it's, it's uh, that was my fault. I, I've been trying to keep up with things, but I do miss some stuff, and I surely miss that. But we're we're keeping it together, and I may be able to bring this profile across, this one that we're in right now with all our trucks and money. I may be able to bring this across to 1.35. I might not, and I'm I'm sort of at peace with that. I am. I was uh, the ATS video that I posted this morning, Sunday. It may have sounded like I was a little hot about it, and I really wasn't. It's uh, I'm I'm fully aware that I sort of make these problems for myself by running the number of mods that I do. If you don't want if you don't want conflict, if you don't want drama, just dial back the mods, and you'll have a lot less problems. So that's that. Uh, what else is going on? 
A set of course of competition. Full release will be out uh, essentially next week, week from now, the 29th, I think, of May. I'm really looking forward to that. I did go back into the game. I had said before in videos that I really was not optimistic about my ability to play that game and have it look good. It's just too, it's too new and my machine is too old. But I spent some time playing with it and I got, with cars on the track, I'm able to get a solid 60 FPS with some really high settings. Surprising to me because the game's not full retail yet, so it's theoretically not fully optimized. But I got it looking pretty good and, and playing plenty fast. And here's something really weird about a set of course at Competition. I know it's not done yet. It's not full retail. And even after it's full retail, there's going to be, you know, day one patches and they're going to continue to tuke it. Tuke it? Tune it. <laughs> Tune it and tweak it. Tuke it. Oh, man. It's too late to start again. We've been driving too long. Took it. Yeah, well, let's just pretend that never happened. So they're going to continue to tune the game, and it will get better. So who knows if the way that it is right now is the way that it's going to stay, but I can tell you that the physics may be good. But for me, the game has kind of a dead feel to it. And I think a lot of that is coming down to force feedback. And something really interesting about racing sims and racing games. We're so particular now, right? And you hear people talk a lot about physics. This game's physics, that game's physics. Who's got the better physics? Loading a tile, scaring me. <laughs> okay, nobody do anything crazy. All right, made it. And, you know, what does that mean? And I know if you were to put uh, something like Forza Horizon at one end of the spectrum and iRacing at the other end of the spectrum, yeah, there's definitely a huge gap between those two. The problem is when you get into the middle, you know, and you, and you start talking about the shades of gray. So Forza at one end, iRacing at the other, obvious difference. But in the middle, you have something like Race Room right next to R Factor. And the difference between those two is not night and day, like Forza and iRacing. The difference between R Factor and Race Room, that's an incremental difference. And yet you still see fanboys on the internet battling about it. Oh, that sucks. Mine's the best. No, yours sucks. Mine's the best. And you hear people talking about, you know, uh, iRacing will, will patch and people go crazy. Oh, this tire model is terrible. It's this, it's that. And I think, man, can you really tell? Can you? And people say they can. But I'm beginning to realize that for me, the physics of a race sim comes down as much to my force feedback settings, I think, as it does to the, to the physics of the game. Because a game with, with what people say is fantastic physics, like R Factor, to me, kind of feels like ass. And I think, well, that's, that has to be my force feedback settings then, because this is, this is a game with very well-regarded physics, right? So, carefully. So that's a big part of it. And I will continue to, uh, to work on my force feedback setup for a set of course competition, but at the moment, regular set of Corsa or old set of Corsa, whatever you want to call it, to me, feels better than a set of Corsa competition. And I've looked online. Now, it's got presets for my wheel. But who knows? Who knows? So that will be in full release next week. And I'm really looking forward to it. I'm also extremely curious if they're going to keep it the GT3 only, as some people say they are. And then other people say that over time, they're going to add more sports car classes. And there will be multi-class. And they will add more tracks. And it will continue to grow and eventually be similar to a set of Corsa in that it will have a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Open wheel and everything else. And then other people say, no, absolutely not. It's only ever going to be just the one the one class, the GT3. We'll see. That is coming next week. Uh, what else is coming? On June 6th, MotoGP 19 is going to be released. Hang on, let me get my wipers and lights turned off because I think it's it stopped raining. Has it not? Yeah, it has. Let me turn those off. So, I don't think I'm going to get MotoGP 19, and there's a couple reasons why. Now, it turns out it has not stopped raining. Moment. There we 
go. There's a couple reasons why. One reason is I'm too busy with too many other sims even to play MotoGP 18. Uh, I never even finished our Moto2 season. Forget MotoGP. I've literally never done a, a MotoGP season. I've only ever done Red Bull Rookies, Moto3, and Moto2. Nobody move. Nobody move. I've done those series. I have not done MotoGP. And we're, we're very close to the points lead in Moto2 in that profile that we have open. But I, I haven't finished it. I have not finished that season. We only have three or four more races to go, and it's possible we could win Moto2. I just haven't, you know, haven't been spending a lot of time in it. So the idea of spending another, what, 60, 70 bucks for MotoGP 19 seems kind of silly at this point. And also, I'm a little, uh, I'm not super happy with Milestone that they never really finished MotoGP 18. There's some, some, mm, there's some ticky-tack stuff, but there's some things that could be could be addressed, and they never did. They started working on a new game before they finished the old one. That kind of irks me. Uh, if I was done with MotoGP 18, I think, yeah, I would definitely buy it, but because I'm not done with it and I'm, I'm miffed, put those two together, and it's like, nah, I'm not buying it. Uh, also, Hell Let Loose, which is a, a fantastic milsim. Uh, World War II milsim, very realistic. Uh, reminds me of Postscriptum, but it looks like it's going to be better. Not going to be buying that as well. Uh, same thing. I'm too busy, and uh, too many things going on. Too many sims going at once, and I I haven't even really delved into uh, squad and post scriptum yet. So the idea of getting another mill sim when I'm really not playing the first two that I own be kind of silly, kind of wasteful. So that is coming as well. If you're into mill sim, hell let loose uh, June sixth, and then uh, July, early July. We've got uh, F1 2019, which I will definitely be buying. I really like that series. I know a lot of people... There we go. Off, I said. There you go. I know a lot of people, uh, and again, this is, you know, big fans of a, of a game, of a sim, of a genre. Big fans tend to have big opinions, and that's totally cool. I mean, I certainly have a big opinion about farm sim. I have a big opinion about truck sim. That's totally cool. I can relate. But people certainly have opinions about uh, the F1 series by Codemasters, is it not? Yeah, I want to say it is. So I will be getting that, and people will be uh, just trashing it and tearing it to pieces and talking about how it's the worst thing ever, which I suppose is what I do with Farm Sim. So fair's fair. Fair's fair. But I'm really looking forward to that. And I, I feel like I don't... I don't know the franchise well enough, even though I've been playing it back to F1 2017. I feel like I don't know the franchise well enough to really comment and comment on it the same way I can comment on something like Farm Sim. So that is uh, that is also on the horizon. Um, and I'm trying to think what else is going on. The the 1.3 patches are in beta for both ATS and ETS, and then the Washington DLC is it's not released yet, but. You can put it on your wish list in the store, get a notification when it is released, and then the Road to the Black Sea DLC is also announced on Steam. You can't buy it, but you can put it on your wish list. And uh, we'll we'll get ready for those. See where it's all headed. And I'm trying to think what else. Uh, there's several other I would I would think of them as lesser sims. Uh, the Alaskan truck driver sim, the firefighting sim and what was the other one the Alaskan bush pilot sim and those all have coming soon notifications which could mean anything I mean from from one perspective uh, they're not even in early access yet so they could literally be years out years out uh, I know this depot I know this drop off oh we gotta slow it down gotta slow it down Here. So I don't know when or if those will be released. I don't know if they will be good when they're released. Alaskan Truck Driver and uh, what Siberian Railway Simulator. I think both those are going to be fun arcade games. But I don't know if either of them are going to be realistic sims. The kind of thing that we play here on this, on this channel. 
Uh, let's just skip it. This trip has taken too long. And how'd we do? There we go. Not quite ready to level up. So yeah, there's a ton of stuff coming for truck sims. There are some good race sims dropping. There's a ton of things that are going to be happening this summer. Hopefully I covered them all for you folks. Thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of European Truck Simulator 2. And we'll see you next time. Take care now.